137. Well, good morning. Good to see each and every one of you this morning. Game visitors, please just make yourself welcome. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, uh, it's been been rough mi missing church here, but I know we've. Uh, I think that anybody remember the seventy degree weather we had a few weeks back? <laughs> I think that was the Lord just saying, "Get ready." <laughs> but uh, but now we uh, we uh, he sent us some it's beautiful snow. I told him I don't. I told him guys at work and truck drivers. I said it seems like I had more fun playing in the snow when I was a kid than I do now. <laughs> now all I do work in the snow, but. Uh, but now we, uh, <clears throat> Lord, send us that, and uh, I know it's a, it's a kind of, it is kind of rough to get around in, but it's uh, stuff like that is good for us. As far as good for uh, good for the gardens and everything, you know, we uh, it uh, really helps out. And uh, but uh, and good to see everybody's been safe. I know they did have uh, have some uh, uh, wrecks and stuff here and there. I know just uh, not before last, maybe down there on 268, they had several with ice. Um, so it's, I think a lot of them mentioned it was a little slippery this past time than it was the snow we had before. But uh, but uh, it is good to have each and every one of you here, and I hope you've had a wonderful week. Uh, <clears throat> before we get started, any announcements here this morning? Uh, I'd like to ask, does anyone, buy, anyone have a special prayer request this morning? I have some. I do remember Liv. She's real bad. She may not make it through the day. Uh, and I have several other requests. Remember these. Uh, yeah. Uh, remember uh, <clears throat> Brother Fred and Sister Lib there. Uh, Sister Lib, she's not doing well at all, and um, we don't know for sure if she'll make it through the day or not. She's, uh, but just remember her in your prayers, and uh, both of them. She's still in the hospital, correct? Yeah, she was in the nursing home, but sent back over there yesterday. Okay, she yeah, she was in the nursing home, but she is back in the, the hospital, I think, in, in ICU. So uh, she's not doing well at all. So y'all just pray, pray for them. Uh, we all know that they've both been through a lot in the past years. And, uh, but uh, just keep this family here in your prayers. Well, never mind. Also. Brother Brady's family. I lost my aunt and my cousin's wife. Well, they're going to be here next week. Well, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Remember this family, church. Remember, the, remember this family, remember Weezer and her, <clears throat> her family there. Uh, also, uh, I do uh, remember uh, Brother Daniel and your prayers, uh, Leanne, Jonathan, all them. Uh, they're just quarantining at home right now because in the morning at 5 or 5.30 5 in the morning, uh, Brother Daniel's going to be having his shoulder surgery. Uh, so y'all keep him in your prayers. You know, uh, you know he's been through a lot with that shoulder and uh, uh, just pray to the Lord to uh, heal him and guide the doctor's hands there and uh, what they're doing there. So uh, just remember him and uh, uh, in the morning you know, pray, uh, pray, pray a special prayer there for them. So. Sammy Bird got to come home. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank God for that. Yes. Thank God. We, uh, <clears throat> Brother Jamie got to come home, as you heard on the column all there, and uh, is doing a whole lot better. And, uh, you know, uh, the Lord's uh, take, taking good care of him there. So praise God. Praise report there. Remember Van's brother Danny and his mother. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yes. Yes. Remember Brother Dan Kennedy and, uh, and Miss Colleen, both. Remember Remember this. <clears throat> Any others this morning? That's the church to keep remembering Keith's brother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remember Keith's brother there in your prayers. Amen. Tenure. Tenure, Miss Mary Lee. <clears throat> Anyone else? Not maybe by uplifted hand. I know we do do have several. Uh, um, I like to ask Brother uh, Randall uh, if you would lead us to pray this morning. <clears throat> Let 
just be a lot for someone who's lost. Father, we ask you now, bring Brother Keith and then bring forth the word, Father. All these things ask you now, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Randall. <clears throat> This morning, uh, we've got a few announcements here. Um, we have a uh, card here. Now, uh, I know you're just going to say, well, this is kind of late, but you've got to understand where it comes from. Uh, now, we have a uh, Christmas card here and a letter here. This is from uh, Brother Michael Delapaz. This is David Delapaz's son. Um, he's, he has been here before and uh, done a presentation for us again. And uh, like uh, someone mentioned, we may, uh, if things can get you know kind of straightened out here and see how they are on traveling and things maybe a little later on this year we can uh, get with him and uh, hear back from him he can come to us again but uh, he uh, sends a christmas card here and uh, we'll post all these in the back here a card but, um, it says uh, for all of you at christmas and it says handwritten dear pastor keith and oak level baptist church it says christmas is, is one of those wonderful times that just naturally bring to mind people who brighten their lives all year so this seems like a good time to tell each of you how important you are and how much you're appreciated. And of course, to wish you all the happiness you deserve. Have a wonderful Christmas. It uh, says, we love you and we are always praying for you. God bless. Um, with love and prayers, Delapaz family. <clears throat> and uh, here again, it says, with a joyful uh, Christmas season, uh, many blessings to you and your family as we remember and rejoice in our Savior's birth. It says, with love and prayers, uh, Mike, Min, Solana, and Selena, Delapaz family. And I'll put this back there, but you won't see some cute little youngins. But uh, that uh, little girl, two little girls there. One, one's got the same little, same little bows and stuff Miss Lily wears there a lot. But, uh, but uh, we'll put this back here, and uh, he sent some pictures of them. And here is a... Uh, well, those that you can see it, here's a little bit better close-up of her, if you can see her. She's a pretty little thing. <laughs> um, let's see, I got, I don't know. okay, I read a little bit on this one, uh, just hit the highlights of it, but we got, uh, we've got one here that uh, is, uh, had some, uh, I was talking about some teachers training here they had back in October, um, and a lot of uh, colored pictures here of different uh, events. Uh, Kabute, uh, I think that's right, a children's center, and uh, it's got, well, about four different children's centers here, and it's got different pictures and stuff. Y'all just take a look at those, and uh, it uh, shows you some of the events and get-togethers they've been having there and uh, services that they've been having. But uh, <clears throat> here at, uh, there's another paper. Here we go. There we go. And there's another one. Uh, youth retreat, um, and then... Uh, Barras Outreach, uh, but again, uh, that uh, tells you there some more about that, um, things uh, that they have going on there. But um, here in the letter, it says, uh, Dear Pastor Keith Wood in Oak Level Baptist Church, it says, Can you believe it's already December? We feel like this year has gone by in the blink of an eye. We're preparing to celebrate Christmas this year in the, in the entire Shekinah Glory Baptist Mission uh, and our families want to wish you good tidings and great joy as we commemorate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can't help but reminisce to the days that each uh, one in our church had, had gone through throughout the entire year. For some, for some it, was a, for it was a trying year as we experienced sickness of COVID uh, while some had a loss of, loss of a loved one. Uh, some experienced problems in finding the right jobs, while some had other heartaches to bear. But the Lord is good, and His mercy and faithfulness is, is ever abounding every day. It's through our continued prayers and partnership um, that can share the uh, joy of Jesus with, with people here in, in Antipolo and Barras outreach, introducing them to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We want to thank you for the uh, for you partnering with us, praying for our many prayer requests, and update uh, you on you on the events of the last three months. And uh, this is Vic Victorious in Christ and Mike Delapaz. And uh, just uh, it's got a prayer prayer request here and uh, the praise report also. And uh, I'll read you this last little thing right here. We're talking about their little, least little girl. Um, it says, hello, baby. Uh, on October the 3rd, uh, 2021, at uh, 12.10 a.m., just 10 minutes after, uh, after Sol uh, Solana's 
second birthday, I guess as our oldest daughter there, um, we welcomed our second precious daughter into the world. Uh, we named her Selena Ab Abriel. I think that's right. Um, thank you so much for your prayers uh, for for my wife's safe delivery and, and fast recovery. We are so blessed since God is so gracious to our family. So uh, they, uh, again, there's a lot more there. Um, I'll uh, post these back here so you can look through them. Uh, and uh, again, just do continue to remember our uh, um, all of our missionaries, and uh, we know they go uh, they go through a lot, even when the virus wasn't around. You know, they've got a lot of uh, um, I guess you'd say poverty issues there. Uh, I know it seems like about every year, every other year, they have uh, uh, problems with the uh, uh, not a tsunami, but what the it's like our hurricanes, but. Uh, uh, have a lot of problems with them around there. So the, that country right there is in really need of our prayers. And uh, But just like uh, Brother Mike mentions and Dave and all them, the real problem they've got there, and just like the world right there, is the lost. Um, and uh, that's what that uh, missionary is there for. But uh, just keep them in your prayers there. Uh, just a little update there for uh, Brother Mike and his family. And uh, just to continue to remember them. <clears throat> um, also... Um, uh, don't forget, but tonight we will not be having a service being the fourth Sunday, uh, but do remember our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, we'll be having it at 7 o'clock, and also next Sunday will be our youth Sunday, um, and we'll be meeting at the block. And I know people's like, what's the block? That's just right around the corner. Um, but now, uh, the block is a, uh, if some of you might not know, there's a, uh, it's like an indoor trampoline park uh, that they have built up at uh, Wilkesboro. And uh, this is a place we're going to uh, take uh, take the kids there. It'll be from 3 to 4 p.m. Um, up there. And I think, as is mentioned, too, uh, I think just everybody provide, uh, you know, like um, your own transportation there and back. So, uh, but we'll be meeting there from 3 to 4, and that will be next uh, Sunday. Um, <clears throat> also, February the 8th will be Ladies Circle meeting coming up at 7 p.m. Um, and February the 13th, uh, the youth Valentine's, they'll be having the youth Valentine's breakfast at 10, 15 a.m. before service that morning. And uh, also February the 19th, the, uh, the food bank. And a list of things here is paper towels and uh, beef stew is the two main things, but pretty much any uh, non-perishable items there. Um, but other items there are welcome, so let's not forget that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, let's see, is there any other uh, announcement, special announcement I'll be leaving out? Okay. Um, if not, then uh, I know we've got a whole list here, and uh, about four of them all on the same day. But uh, as we have, we had any uh, birthdays this past week and like to be recognized, like stand to be recognized. There's one. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Cole. And there's three. We got three. Amen. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, you look, to hit, look here on your list, there. It's, uh, Brother Gary was 16th, uh, Doris uh, Cleary was a 19th, Miss Lily was a 19th, uh, uh, Colby. <laughs> All right, did I look over and he stand up? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, <laughs> you ain't getting out of it. <laughs> See, it's all going to get you. <laughs> oh, happy birthday there. And uh, Brother Colton was a 19th, and uh, little Miss Ada was the 20th there so uh, happy birthday there to each and every one of you. happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday god bless you happy birthday to you i know what it was he seen he said yeah i ain't as young as the rest of them were so i ain't <laughs> Happy birthday to y'all. Uh, <clears throat> have we had anybody this past week had a wedding anniversary and like to stand to be recognized? Okay. Everybody shy of being honest one. <laughs> All righty. Uh, <clears throat> if there not be any other, uh, have I left anything out? Anything at all? Okay. If, uh, if not, then uh, let's all get a hymnal here and stand and turn to page 137. Page 
Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I thought I was saying it right at first. Wrong song. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise just to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him Y'all pray for me this morning. I'm going <clears> to <throat> try to sing a couple songs here. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to borrow about an hour's worth of your water, if you don't mind. I'll give you a refill. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> these uh, uh, couple of songs I'm going to sing, one I've seen several times before. Um, one that is not new, but new to me. Um, never sung it before. But like I said, it is not a new song. Y'all all know it when I start singing it. Hopefully I don't tire it up. But uh, um, <clears throat> we, uh, that's not just a light show, by the way. That's just my, that's how it turns the bass on and off. <laughs> I kind of wish they didn't have the light sometimes, but <laughs> anyway. Um, um, no, we, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I've sung this song several times before, but you know, we, we go through a lot of, uh, things in our life and especially I guess you say when we was in school or even kids now you know one of the biggest things when you uh, go into a sport or whatever you're uh, a lot of things that you're doing right there you you got a, a lot of times you got to do what uh, 
Ford Alley. What do you got to do if you want to try a new sport? Sometimes what do they got to do first? Practice. And what do they usually have for that to see who's going to get on the team? Right. Got your tryouts. Um, and a lot of times that's, uh, you know, that's what you got to go through. And uh, even if that's adults, you know, we got to, you know, if you're going to, I guess you look at the same thing. If you're going maybe for a job interview or something, you know, you're being, uh, they're going to try to test you and see what your knowledge is and all that. But, uh, you know, even all the tryouts we got, you know, a lot of times uh, we get to do these things uh, that we uh, want, really want to do. And then sometimes they're like, well, no, yeah, we're just, uh, we'd rather have somebody else or we're going to uh, pick this other person. <clears throat> One thing about it, I'm glad salvation doesn't work that way. Um, you know, we uh, we go in and, and uh, you know, when we accept Christ, it's not, you know, well, okay, you know, he doesn't sit down with us. Let me see if you're good enough to be one of my children. It doesn't work that way. You know, if we accept him as our Savior, you know, then there's, uh, there's no will. You know, if you, uh, let's see what you've done in your past, because our past does not matter. You know, and, uh, and I'm thankful for that, but... Um, and like I said, one day, you know, even us as Christians, uh, you know, even though we failed him and uh, we get to heaven, and I said, now we are going to have to answer for these things that we do, but then it's going to come that time, then that's going to be no more. And uh, we're not going to remember then. And thank God we're not going to remember the things we've had to go through in the past years uh, with everything, with the virus, lost loved ones, and uh, the sorrows and things we go through. But, um, <clears throat> you know, again, there's not the... Uh, I'm just glad that time, that days are coming there. But uh, this uh, this song I've I sung here is just about a older man that wanted to sing uh, in the choir and just couldn't do it. But uh, we found out he got to sing in a better one later. <clears throat> Please let me sing in the choir, in the choir. Please let me sing in the choir. One old man can't be all that bad. Won't you please let me sing in the choir? I guess you'd say he's a fixture around town. They all knew his name. Every time the church bells rang, Uncle Jesse, he up and came. He always sat in the very same pew, humming in a voice loud and rough. When it came to the Antioch Church House Choir, Uncle Jesse never heard enough. See, he always wanted to sing in the choir, but he couldn't sing a lick, don't you know? Why, he tried out for the Antioch Choir 34 years in a row. He'd always get to the tryouts early, he wanted to try out first. But instead of his singing, getting any better every year it just got a little worse he'd say please let me sing in the choir in the choir please let me sing in the choir one old man can't be all that bad won't you please let me sing in the choir one cloudy sunday morning I remember it was raining some The church bells rang and everybody came except Jesse He didn't come And everybody started getting worried But they figured they'd start anyhow And just as they did Jesse's voice came booming down from heaven And I don't know how he said, I found me a choir that'll let me sing. Now I'm singing in the choir. And I can raise my voice just as high as yours. And maybe just a little higher. Well, I found me a choir that'll let me sing. Now I'm singing in the choir. Folks down there, you can't hold me light Cause I'm singing in that heavenly choir Oh, I found me a choir that'll let me sing Now I'm singing in the choir 
Yet I can lift my voice just as high as yours And maybe just a little higher Oh, I found me a choir that'll let me sing Now I'm singing in the choir You folks down there, you can't hold me a light Cause I'm singing in the heavenly choir Please let me sing in the choir, in the choir Please let me sing in the choir One old man can't be all that bad Won't you please let me sing in the Um, this uh, find it. this next song I'm going to sing again. This is one that uh, is uh, it's not a new song. It's just one I haven't ever uh, sung by myself. And uh, to be honest with you, I hadn't ever sung it at all until I tried this one here. And uh, <clears throat> but this is uh, this is one that. Uh, we're going to, uh, Lord willing, we get to get back to our normal service and stuff. We're going to all try it here in the choir. So, uh, <clears throat> but uh, this, uh, I didn't get into it much here. Y'all know it's entitled, Thank God I'm Free. For a long time I've traveled Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy In sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. <clears throat> like a bird out of prison That's taking its flight Like a blind man that God Gave back his side Like a poor wretched beggar That's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through his holy name Thank God I am free, free, free From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free. From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved By His wonderful grace 
I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way Thank God I am free Amen. Good morning. Good morning. What a blessing to look across the house of God and see each and every one of you here. I know that we're missing a few due to sickness and other circumstances, and God knows all about those needs. But uh, what a thrill it is to be in the house of God. There's nothing that will make you appreciate uh, being in the house of God like not being able to be in the house of God. And uh, I never want to take it for granted to uh, be able to come and sit in the house of God and Worship the Lord and, and do that in spirit and in truth. And uh, I ask you to uh, do that today, that we would worship together in spirit and in truth. Uh, thank you, brother. You didn't have to swap that out. That'd been all right. Amen. Uh, I'm not worried about that at all. If it makes me sing as good as you, I'll drink after you. Amen. <laughs> but uh, I love those songs. Amen. I always uh, love hearing the song about Uncle Jesse. Amen. And, uh, it, it just hearing Brother Bobby sing, a lot of y'all sing, it just makes me feel like I can sing. And I just want to sing along with you. And, uh, but one of these days we're going to join in unison. Amen, Brother Scotty. It's going to come a day that we're going to be able to sing a song that the angels cannot sing. What is that song? I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And I'm so thankful that I am saved this morning and saved to the uttermost. I've heard preachers say this. I've been saved from the guttermost to the uttermost. And there's a lot of truth in that. Regardless of what you've done or where you have been, we've all been uh, lost and undone without Jesus. Amen. We've all been in need of a Savior. Our good deeds, our good works, our church attendance was not able to do it. Amen. Uh, but, but by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we have been made free, we've been set free, and the Bible said we are free indeed. You say, preacher, you just don't know the baggage and the weights and the things that's on my life uh, right now. Well, I want you to know that God did not put those on you, amen? Satan may have done it, we may have done it ourselves, other people may have done it, but I'm going to tell you what you can do today. You can shut those chains off of you. You can lay those weights and those sins off of you. And you can pick up your cross and go on for the glory of God. Amen. And uh, we want to bring to you a message that the Lord has given us. It's a timely message from the Word of God. I believe it's a message that all of us can use. And you can apply it to your heart and to your life. We're going to be in two places. I, I normally try... Not to do that, but we follow the Lord on this. And if you would just and indulge me uh, this uh, one time that I'd have you turning in two separate uh, places. And if we're going to do that, you're going to have to pay real close attention. And I'll try my best not to chase off to, after any rabbits. And we'll uh, try to make this just as plain as we can. Uh, but your first uh, text of Scripture is going to be found in the first chapter of the book of Judges, okay? That's immediately following the book of Joshua. It'll be the first chapter in the book of Judges. We'll be looking at the first seven verses there, okay? Judges chapter number 1 and verses 1 through 7. And then uh, I'll have you turn it over uh, to uh, Galatians chapter number 6. Galatians chapter number 6, and we'll be looking at verses 7 through 9. Now, what we're, what we're going to be doing, this is not a two-part message. The, the first part in the book of Judges is going to be our illustration. Now, uh, the, the, it said, I believe, that uh, uh, something like only like 30 or 40 percent that you hear, that you retain, but uh, you help me if I'm wrong, but I know it's about 60 uh, percent, if you be able to see it and to hear it also, that you're going to retain that. And the Word of God is uh, best at this. Uh, the Word of God will give you illustrations and personal illustrations 
in the word of God if we'll search those out and look for those. You know, it's, it's said, and I believe that this generation has forgotten this, that uh, if you forget history, that you're doomed to repeat that. It's good to see Brandon and the Phillips family back there. I know there's been a lot of sickness in that family, and uh, you continue to pray for them, that the Lord would continue to touch them and keep the elders safe in that family as others. Uh, just so thankful for what God's doing. Appreciate you praying for our family. Good to have us, uh, our family back with us, and I appreciate that. Uh, but uh, just uh, this morning, uh, we're talking about this generation, what is forgotten. A lot of, uh, you've heard it said before, if you don't remember and learn from history that we're doomed to repeat that. Uh, and it's very important that we look into the Old Testament and we see what God has done in the Old Testament, how He's handled sin, uh, how He's handled situations in the Old Testament. And I believe it would keep us uh, from making a lot of mistakes uh, that we see uh, in the day and hour we live in. And that's, uh, that's a picture of what the message is today. Judges chapter number 1, we're going to find an illustration. And then the application of that illustration we're going to find in Galatians chapter number 6, okay? Uh, so without further ado, let's get into what will uh, make a difference, and that is the Word of God. So you pray for us today that the Spirit would have His will and way. We don't want to get ahead of Him, all right? Uh, we want to move with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want you all to feel welcome here today, and if you're visiting with us, whether by in person or by the way of internet, I want you to know that you're welcome in the house of God here at Oak Level. Amen. But the one that is most welcome and most needed is the person of the Godhead Trinity called the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, let's let him have his will and way. Uh, let him move in your heart. Uh, if he shows you a truth, acknowledge that. Acknowledge that we're wrong. God's right. And you take that truth and apply it to your life, okay? And none of what God gives us is meant to leave here in the church pew. All of this is meant for you to take inside with you and out and apply it to your life. And I believe today, I, with all my heart, this lesson and this law, the Word of God, uh, is of utmost importance for us to take. Uh, because, Charles, what I have learned uh, over the years I'll soon be 52 years old, and what I've learned over the years that God has proved His Word right time and time and time again. And the, the law of sowing and reaping, okay, is proved itself. Brother Scotty, you've seen it time and time, not in your life, but in other people's lives. The older you get, the more that you see, the more you realize this, Brother Donnie, is 100% true. That that you sow... You surely shall reap. Let us look at the illustration in Judges chapter number 1. The Word of God says, Now after the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said unto Simeon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise will go up with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand. And they slew of them in Bezek ten thousand men. And they found Adonabazek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. But Adonabazek fled, and they pursued after him, watch this, and caught him, and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. And Adonabazek said, Three score and ten kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. As I have done, so God hath, so God hath requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and there... He died. Let us pray again together. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord, that you cleanse us of any fleshly thoughts, God, any fleshly concerns for just a little while that we would put on the mind of Christ and be spiritually minded. 
Lord, I pray for a calming of the Holy Spirit on our thoughts and on our hearts. And Lord, it seems that because we live in a rat race world, it's hard to slow down and hear your word and take thought of what your word says. And I know Satan, he's fighting against it. But Lord, I know that the Heavenly Father that you're far greater than the old devil. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And I know that we are overcomers because of Jesus Christ. And I pray today that we would overcome the flesh, be able to take your precious word and apply it to our heart and to our life. If there's one here among us, God, that's lost, and God, they're in their chains of sin, and Lord, may they see today that they too can be free, but only through and by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that they too must be born again. Take your precious word. Now take us, Lord, I pray, and use us as your mouthpiece, and as always, help us to decrease that Christ would increase. For it's in His name we do pray. Amen. And amen. Here in our uh, scripture in the book of Judges, we find uh, that at the, the end of Joshua, the book of Joshua, if you remember, uh, Moses was just about to lead the children over in the promised land, uh, but God did not allow Moses to do that because of sin and other, other uh, situations there. But we find that Joshua uh, was the one that led the children uh, over into Canaan's land, over in the promised land. And as you read through the book of Joshua, you find that he is not only a great spiritual leader, but he's also a great military leader. Even today and in the past, uh, our, our leaders of our military has taken illustrations from the battles uh, of Joshua. Uh, but he was a great military leader. And we find at the last chapter of the book of Joshua, Joshua challenges the children of Israel, said, choose you today whom you're going to serve. If you're going to serve the gods that were in Egypt, all the little G-O-D's, you serve them. But if you're going to serve the God that has delivered you, you serve him. And that they had a testimony there that they were going to serve God. But we find here at the death of Joshua, there's a transition that takes place in the nation Israel. A lot of, a lot of fighting. And even some amongst their self to where even some of the tribes were almost destroyed. They were inner fighting. They had no direction. They had no leadership as to say. Uh, and we find here in the first part of our text that they go to the Lord and said, who's going to lead us? Who's going to lead us in battle to fight uh, against the uh, Canaanites and against uh, uh, all the inhabitants of the land? And God says that we're, uh, that Judah, which is the fourth born of Israel, we find that uh, Jacob uh, had 12 sons and Judah was the four, uh, fourth of the 12 sons. Uh, it's, it's important that we see Judah as a, a, a source of strength and leadership because uh, uh, we have uh, a line of the tribe of Judah and his name is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's all about the lineage. You remember that? How it's entwined through the Word of God. So we find that God says that Judah is going to lead. So he goes to his brother Simeon and uh, the Bible says they go up and they fight and they find themselves fighting against the Canaanites in a city called uh, uh, Bezek. And now this, this little town, a little providence in Israel, if, you, if you're looking at a map, uh, the river Jordan goes through the middle of it. It's to the north and just to the west uh, of uh, the, the river Jordan. Just a small town, but the Bible says that, well, it wasn't that, that small. They slew, uh, slew 10,000 men there as uh, they began to battle. But the Bible says right here, uh, in verse number 5, they found Adonis Bezek in Bezek. They fought against him. They slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. And the Bible says, but Adonabazek, now we got to look at that. Now we say Adonabazek, why, what, what's that name? Uh, actually, Adonai or Adonai means Lord, right? Bezek uh, means the area and the territory that they were in. Now who this man was, he was the leader or the king, if you will, of Bezek. He was the head, he was the leader. And the Bible says whenever uh, uh, Judah and Israel come again, up against uh, this little uh, town called Bezek, that the leader, Adonabazek, fled off, uh, and they took off after him. But the Bible says, look, look said, the Bible says they, they pursued after him and they caught this king, Adonabazek, and the Bible says they cut off his thumbs and cut off his big toes. 
Now, why do you think that is? Uh, if, if you wanted to uh, incapacitate someone from uh, uh, any strength of their life, but especially a soldier or someone to fight in a war, uh, you if you cut off uh, their thumbs, it's impossible or it's very, very hard to fight in battle. There's no way of really gripping a sword or gripping any type of a weapon. Uh, but also, if you would cut his uh, big toes off, it would be hard to... It, it takes his strength away. He's un, unable to stand. He's unable to run. He's unable to fight and do so in an effective manner. So we see that they have cut his big thumbs off, his big toes off. But notice the response. And right here is where I want you to get at, all right? In verse number 7, the Bible says, And Adonibazek said, Three score and ten kings. You remember how much a score is? That's 20, right? So three scores, that's 60 plus 10. There's 70. He said, and Adonibazek said, 70 or three score and 10 kings, having their thumbs and their great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table. What is the Bible saying here? This king said, you cut my thumbs off and you cut my big toes off. But there have been 70 kings that I've done the same to. I've cut their thumbs off. I've cut their toes off. And they gathered meat under my table. What does that mean? They were slaves and they were beggars in his castle, in his king. They ate of the crumbs just like the dogs did. Seventy kings. But watch his response here. It said, that, uh, As I have done, so God hath requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem and there he died. What is Adonibazek saying? He said, I've done this very thing to 70 other kings. And now God was requited me. That means he's paid me back. He's, he's paid me back for what I have done. Very important that we see this illustration in the Word of God. Now we want to move uh, over into our text scripture. Three verses real quickly and we're going to look at uh, the law of sowing and reaping. Alright, you with me now in Galatians chapter number 6 verse number 7. Alright, I still I all like that. I love hearing pages turning. I want you to make sure that you know where, uh, where we need to be and you take God's Word and apply it. So don't forget Adonibazek. Uh, 70 kings he had done that same thing to, but he knew, he said, I'm getting what I deserve because I've done that to other kings, all right? Now in the Word of God, Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 7, God's Word says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Taking that first verse, number 7, the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. What that is telling us this morning that man is easily deceived. We find the deception that it was in the Garden of Eden. And through that, uh, sin entered into mankind. And man has continually been deceived. There is a deceiver out there. His name is Satan. But the Bible says we're also able to deceive ourselves. The Bible says... Be not deceived, God is not mocked. The Word of God is telling us here, even though you think that you will never get caught, even though you think that you can live a certain way and get by with it, that God is not mocked. The laws that God's Word has laid down from the foundation of time is going to hold true no matter what. Alright? Are you with me? There's an there's a element that's in the world today and they're spending every ounce of their energy 
that is trying to get you to see that global warming is the, the end all be all and that is going to just destroy us and we need to drop what we're doing, everything that we're doing and focus on global warming. And I'm not making light of that because I do know that mankind is held responsible for being a good steward of this world and this land. But I want you to know something. The laws of God and the laws of nature will not bow and it will not break because of mankind or for any reason. If you remember back in Genesis chapter number 8, there about verse number 22, God's Word says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. That just tears that down. I've heard people say before, well, at the end times before Jesus comes, you won't be able to tell the difference between the seasons. Well, that just tears that down. Amen? Mankind has no control over this earth. It's in God's hands. It's God's creation. And God's in full control. Uh, so I want, what I would give the advice, I would give all those that is worried about that and they're standing and, and, and protesting about global warming, what I would say is get a shirt on and comb and wash your hair go out and get a job and get in God's word and find out that God is the final authority a man has no control of it and God's law is going to stand true amen hey this is his creation now you're his creation don't think I can just decide to do whatever I want to do and I'm going to, going to uh, just uh, I live my life however I want to and there's not going to be any consequences. That's not true. God's word tires it down and said that that you sow you surely shall reap. Don't, don't fool yourself. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You think you can live how you want to and think you can reap the blessings of God. It does not work that way. Amen. Does not work that way. So first of all, we find in verse number 7, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We find you reap, the, it says right, For whatsoever a man soweth. The first law of sowing and reaping is that you reap what you sow. In our illustration, we find that to be true. Un, it just uh, uncanny how uh, perfect that it wound up in the life of Adonah Bezek. Uh, I mean, he was chased out of town and his thumbs and big toes were cut off just exactly like what he had done to 70 other kings. So we find out that we reap what we sow. The part of being deceived in mankind is this. Now, you know, the, the first thing you think of is uh, and our preacher is going to be honest about uh, living a bad life, living a sinful life, uh, and all. But I'm going to tell you what uh, the good news about this is. Watch this; it works both ways. Amen. Hey, you sow good seed, you're going to reap a good harvest. Amen. And you sow bad seed, you're going to reap a bad harvest. Amen. And so it's up to us. That's all the Word of God has portrayed to us. It's all our choice. Amen. It's up to us. He tells us what will happen if we choose to go our own way, to make our own decisions, to plant our own seed. We have that free will. But He gives us the warnings and the Scripture, uh, scripture to understand that we will reap what we sow. Amen? Not only that, moving along, we find in verse number 8, watch this. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. I love this right here. And this is really what I want to focus because I want to tell you why. We've all made bad decisions. Can I get an amen right there? Anybody? We've all made bad decisions and we've all had the consequences off of those decisions, haven't we? You know, it reminds me of consequences. It's amazing. Uh, you know, we, we think we get away with things, don't we? Uh, we'll get into uh, the, the second law of the harvest here in just a moment. But we think we get away from losing. But you know, ain't it amazing how that eventually we all scoot up to the table and uh, have us a big helping of our own consequences? You know, it's, it just seems like there's a time in our life now, whether it be good or bad, amen, uh, you, you've seen uh, going about doing good and, and seeing good come of that. But how often times that... We've seen bad decisions bring about 
bad consequences. It reminds me of an episode, if I can just go off the uh, uh, script, there too, ain't no script, amen. Uh, but go off the uh, platform there just a little bit. Uh, but I, I love, and all of us says, well, you know, y'all not to watch that. I love Andy Griffith, all right? Uh, and I believe there's a lot of uh, moral lessons in there, more so than pretty much anything else on there today. But I, I remember an episode. Uh, do you remember uh, they was having a, a, a money drive down the schoolhouse, and uh, uh, it was for underprivileged children, all right? And uh, do you remember uh, the word got back to Andy that his little Opie only gave three cents? Do you remember that? And boy, he was irate. And uh, really, uh, what he was irate about, because he said this, what is people going to think about the sheriff, the sheriff's son only giving three cents? And boy, he was just, uh, just hounding Opie, and uh, he got him in there uh, at, the, at the supper table there, or right there in the living room, was talking to him, said, and trying to explain to him, uh, and, uh, and just Opie couldn't understand, what are you talking about? He said, I can't believe uh, you only gave just a small part. He said, well, golly, Pa, I said, oh, I've got $2.61. He said, well, my goodness, gave, what a big uh, philanthropist, a big spender, gave 3%. He said, you don't understand. He said, I'm saving my money for Charlotte. He said, well, who's Charlotte? He said, that's my girlfriend. He said, oh, I said, now, uh, you're gonna, you don't mind spending it on your girlfriend, uh, but yet you got these little underprivileged children out there and uh, he said uh, uh, he said well you don't understand he said Pa he said uh, whenever I get enough money I'm going to buy her a coat do you remember that and what Andy said after this is a lot of truth Opie said what are we having for supper Pa he said you and Aunt B are having fried chicken I'm having crow. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how that happens so much. That's a small illustration. But that's exactly what happens to us oftentimes. You know, we, we don't admonish people uh, and give them mercy and give them forgiveness and give them understanding or give them uh, the, 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 the room, amen, to just... Uh, be human and may not be perfect, and uh, yet there all that Andy was was he was worried about how it, it looked on himself, but yet he forgot that this young boy that he's he's had a heart of love, and he didn't give him that room, so he passed judgment on that. And the Bible says here in the Word of God in verse number eight, we see that but he that that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So we find not only that we reap what you sow, I want you to see here in verse number 8 that we reap more than we sow. Because I want us to focus on the good things that soweth to the Spirit. Amen. We're talking about uh, the, the, the characteristics of a child of God. Uh, whenever you show love and whenever you show forgiveness and you show all those things that the fruit of the Holy Spirit uh, represents. We, uh, we find in verse number 8, But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now those, those uh, things that you sow the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, being a child of God, what he says is not only are you sowing to the Spirit, you're going to reap not only here, but life everlasting. Do you see how it multiplies? That's, that's the laws of the harvest. You reap what you sow, you reap more than you sow. Whether it be good or bad, is it not? Now we put a, a kernel or two kernels of corn in a hole. Uh, they die and they germinate and they come and they grow up to a stalk. Sometimes uh, one, two, uh, maybe three years of corn and, uh, and multiple uh, kernels of corn on that ear. Now so is the way of the Lord whenever we sow good seed and, and sow bad seed. The Bible says here in verse number 9, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we find that we reap what we sow. And verse number 8, we see that we reap more than we sow. But verse number 9 tells us that we, we reap later 
than we sow. There's actually, uh, there's, there's actually a conditional phrase right there in the very last portion. Whenever uh, the, that, those two letters, I and F, is spoken, that means it's a conditional response. The Bible says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. That, that's easy to say, isn't it? Amen. Brother Jack, it's easy to say, don't grow weary in well-doing, especially uh, whenever you, you're, you're living in this cynical world. You're living in this uh, world to where it seems like it's all about uh, what people can pull and people can get of you. Am I being uh, truthful when I say that the more that you're around that lifestyle and around that mentality, if you're not careful, you'll see yourself being pulled into that lifestyle and you'll be the one of the complainers. You'll be the one that has no forgiveness or no compassion or shows no mercy to one another. I, I've, I've always I thought of this myself. Uh, I, I don't know if it would do us all good or not if we had a mirror uh, that was just was held in front of us all the time. And we would see our facial expressions whenever we're dealing with people and whenever we're in the world. Amen? Because I don't know, I know I have to do it. I've got to roll my eyes a hundred times in a day. Amen? <laughs> I know some of you in management and, and teachers and all, I, I know. Amen? I know it. But the Bible says here, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, that due season means that there is a time coming to where we will reap if we faint not. And oftentimes it seems like when you're going about well-doing, you know, I, I have talked to people about this and, and they're being a low place in their life and, and they know beyond, I don't have to ask them. Uh, they'll tell me. Preacher, the reason I'm in this situation is because of the decisions I made back here. And I don't know what to do. Well, I'm going to tell you what to do when you find yourself reaping consequences and reaping a bad harvest. As quickly as you possibly can, do not wait for another day at this very moment. Start planting good seed. Everything that you do, make sure that that seed, that decision, that word that you speak, that deed that you do, that decision that you make is, a, is a, aligned with the Word of God and with Jesus first. Amen. That's what joy is. Amen. We get things in the right place. Jesus first, others, and then yourself. Amen. The acronym for joy is a good way to remember how we need to keep our priorities in our life. But oftentimes we got it Y and we got it O and we got it J. Amen. We got it reversed. And we put ourselves first and our feelings first and what we want. And oftentimes whenever we feel repercussions of other people, the first thing that I want to do is lash out. I want to treat people the way they treat me. Is that, I mean, really, I do. I, I, it's not the way God's Word tells us to be, but I also understand the struggles that are in this flesh. Well, the Bible says that for in due season we shall reap. And you know, I, I love that song, Farther Along. There's a portion in that song, Farther Along. It deals with, you know, it's, it's hard to see people that's not living for God and not doing things the way God's Word says to do and it seems like they prosper and they keep on prospering. And here I am just struggling along. And they, you, you look at some people out there, Satan will make you do it, won't he? He'll sure put your eyes on somebody that just living life to the, uh, to, to the hilt, no consequences at all. And you think, well, how will they get by with it? Well, I'm going to tell you what, you don't know what's going on in that home. You don't know how miserable that person is. And I promise you this, uh, those material things that they've got, uh, may, they'll find pleasure in it, but it's only for a season. That'll pass away. It's amazing. It's amazing how those things, is it not, that we thought that we could not live without. And if, if I could wake up on Christmas morning and this be under the tree, I'll not want anything else. But my next Christmas, that toy is in the back of the I'm the toy box. I'm gun safe, right? <laughs> How, how many? How many you want? Just one more, amen. But you know, there's ne never any satisfaction to that. But the Bible says, if we'll reap to the Spirit, 
Bible says if you give, it shall be given to you, right? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together to other men, given to your bosom, right? And, and you'll, you'll enjoy those things, not only, watch this, it's important, not only in this life, or in this time, but in the life and the time to come. That's the thing about the spiritual seeds of the Word of God. It continues to multiply and multiply and multiply. You cannot outgive God. Try it sometime, amen. Hey, listen, once you get to the place that you're tithing of the requirements of God, then take a step further and put some offerings out there and plant that. I'm not Mike Murdoch, all right? I'm not going to tell you to plant a hundred dollar seed unless you want me to plant it for you, okay? Now I, I, y'all don't thought y'all know who Mike Murdoch is. That's a good thing. Amen. But there's a lot of people so talking about just give me just you need to plant a thousand dollar seed. You need to plant this, plant that. I'm gonna tell you what, if you go about planting spiritual seeds, amen. God will take care of everything. God will take care of your finances, amen. He'll sure do that, amen. You try Him and see that God, you may not have everything that you want, but you, you, uh, you'll get to the place to where you don't really want all those things that you thought you wanted, right? That's why they wind up in the back of the toy box. They're not that important. So you don't reap immediately. Now sometimes, God allows you to see some things Immediately. But not always. If you think about it, think about Adonabazek. Seventy kings before he ever paid the consequences of his decisions. How long do you think, how many years do you think he went to battle against seventy kings before it finally caught up with him? What about us? Quite simply, what kind of seeds are we sowing? Are we, seeing, are we sowing seeds to the flesh of sin? Are we sowing seeds that the world is sowing? Are we sowing spiritual seeds? The things that's pleasing unto God. Hardest thing to do is to not render evil for evil. The hardest thing to do for me is to not pay somebody back that hurts me or hurts someone that I love. That's, that's hard. But if you'll remember, I believe it was Matthew chapter number 5 that, that Jesus was speaking at the Beatitudes. I may have the Scripture wrong. But He says, Those that show mercy shall receive mercy. What is mercy? Mercy is not getting what we deserve, Right? And that person that's wronged you, that person that's hurt your feelings, you may be 100% correct that they was in the wrong. But does that give you the right? Does that give me the right to pass judgment and bring condemnation on that person? But oftentimes we'll do that. You know, oftentimes we'll harbor those feelings and those seeds of unforgiveness in our heart. And Brother Darrell, you know that other person is not any worse for wear. You know, if, if, if their intention was to hurt you, uh, their feelings is not hurt because you're pouted up and you're mad and you're sad because of the way they treated you. Seeds of forgiveness oftentimes, and I believe this with all my heart, has more to do with you than it does with the other person. I promise you this, if you fail to Sow those seeds of unforgiveness. If you'll plant those seeds and walk away from it, and just in your heart say, you know what, they no longer owe me, I, I know that they have hurt me. Maybe it was their intent, maybe it was not. But one thing's for certain, God's law is going to be true. That that you sow, you surely shall reap. Not only in this life, okay, but in the life to come. That's where reaping more than you sow comes into play. If you're lost and you're undone without the Lord, you know what you're doing? You're, you're not sowing good seed. You say, well, I do this and I do that. But you're living for your father the devil. The Bible speaks of that. You're either of your father God or you're of your father the devil. And you do your, the works of your father. 
So I want you to know that the seeds that you're continually to plant, you'll continue to reap the harvest, the repercussions of those bad seed. And one of these days, death is going to come to your doorstep and come to your home. And you know what? It don't just stop. It does not end with the grave. The Bible speaks of eternity. After this. Do you remember the scripture says it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment? That means after death, there's things that's going to be taking place. Whether in hell or whether in heaven, you're going to exist or you're going to live eternally. And the consequences of the very most important decision that you ever have to make is the deciding factor of that. You can choose to reject Jesus Christ or you can choose to accept Him, repent of your sin, and say, Jesus, I am wrong, you are right. I have nothing in me that is righteous. Give me your righteous. Wash me in your blood. Save me. And take me to that place that you prepared for me. Well, the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. I want you to know there's only one way to heaven, but He's the one sure way. You don't have to worry about which way's right and which way's wrong. I want you to know that there's only one way, and it's through and by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus looked at His disciples and He said, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I love you with all my heart. Rewards and consequences to our decisions. Are you taking thought? Are you following the leadership of the Holy Spirit and going about sowing good seed? If you're reaping the harvest of a bad crop, I want you to understand this. The quicker you can get good seed in the ground, the quicker you can reap the harvest off the good seed of the Spirit. Amen. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Brother Bobby's got a song. Our musicians come. I'm so thankful for each and every one of you this morning. For